Okay. All right, so we have uh, about nine minutes here because I have an appointment at three, but I think this video can be accomplished in this period of time. Uh, we just finished looking at vector math operations add and multiply, and in this video, all we're going to look at is magnitude and normalize. Um, uh, maybe something extra, but th this, is, this is where we're starting. Okay, so first of all, again, we're still at this moment, at this time and place of just looking at these functions in a kind of abstract way. It, once we can get through this list, we're, it's going to be much more, I think, useful and interesting to actually apply these functions into a real practical example. But I think it's worth looking at the math behind magnitude for a second. So let's say we have this vector called v. And we want to know its length. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, isn't that one of the properties of the vector? A vector is something that has both magnitude, length, and direction. Well, it's true, but the p vector class, if you remember, if we were to actually look inside the guts of processing, the bowels, the depths, the innards, whatever, we would see this p vector Java class, and we would see what it actually is storing are the components of that vector. This is something like what it looks like, right? We're storing the components of the vector. The vector itself doesn't actually store its magnitude. So if we need that vector's magnitude, it needs to be calculated, and it gets calculated through the magnitude function. So how does that work? Well, remember, the components are an x and a y. x and a y. Now look at this. Out of this vector, we made a right triangle. The components are an x and a y. We could call this uh, h. <laughs> I don't know, to be the hypotenuse of that triangle, the magnitude of the vector. First of all, we often write notation-wise, the magnitude as a vector will look like this. So this is what we're saying. We want the length of that vector. How do we get the length of that vector? Well, if you remember, the Pythagorean theorem, that is the worst right triangle anybody has ever drawn. But <laughs> a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, solve for c. c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. And in fact, the magnitude of this vector is square root of x times x plus y times y. Right? That's how we might write it in code. And I know ah, I need a little line here where this is, this is actually only as far as you can see is about there. But this is x times x plus y times y. Ah, OK. <laughs> um, OK, so that's how it works. Luckily for us, all we need to do is call this mag function. This is one of the reasons for using the p-vector class in the first place. Because the magnitude of a vector is something we want to know very, very often. And if every time, everywhere in your program, you had to remember to write square root this and square root that, your code would get kind of ballooned. So the point of the vector class is to store these vector quantities and perform and have functions to enable these mathematical operations that we do over and over again, add, subtract, multiply, magnitude, normalize, over and over again, so we can just access them through a method. So if we walk over here, we can see before, uh, this, was our, this is where we left this little vector math example where um, we now we're making a vector between the center of the window and the mouse, and then we shrunk its magnitude by 0.1, so it's 10%, and that is where we left this example. Now we could do something like, we could say, hey, let's draw a rectangle in the corner of the, the screen, uh, which has a width, okay. So let's, the point of what we're doing is we can get that vector's length, and we can store it in a variable. Now what would we do with that variable? That's an, op that's an interesting question. There are lots of times where the magnitude itself is useful. If the magnitude of the velocity is greater than 10, you've, you're going too fast and slow down. There are lots of reasons why we might want to examine the magnitude of a vector. Um, here, though, I'm just going to use it to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to, for dramatic effect, color it red. So we can see here, oh, look at that. Uh, that was kind of exciting. Um, let's, uh, I don't know. I want to just put it in the, it's fine, it's fine there. So let's move the mouse around. You can see that rectangle is growing according to the size of that vector. And if I don't want to shrink it by 10% anymore, we can see that this is just representing the magnitude of the vector. So again, there is no, this example isn't really doing anything. It's just demonstrating that we could calculate a vector and use the quantities. I'm sort of drawing arbitrary stuff. I'm drawing a line. I'm drawing this rectangle just to try to demonstrate, here's the syntax. Here's how these methods work. We're getting closer. 
Uh, okay, so interesting thing about magnitude. I got four minutes left. Interesting thing about magnitude is we often want in our lives, something we want in our lives is to, is to just be normal sometimes. Actually, most of the time we don't want to be normal, but I actually have no idea what I'm talking about. Who knows what we want in our lives? <laughs> vectors. Sometimes we want our vectors. Forget about our lives. I know nothing about what a good, how to deal with one's life. But I do know something about vectors. We sometimes want our vectors to be normal. And what do we mean by normal? We want to deal with vectors that have a length of 1. A unit vector, a normalized vector. What does it mean to normalize something? You can think of the word standardized in a way. Um, what it means to normalize a vector is to take any arbitrary vector. Look, I can just draw arbitrary vectors. If I want to normalize all these vectors, I want them all to keep their direction but have a length of 1. So let's say this approximately represents one unit that much. So this vector would be normalized, would look like this, this one 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 would look like this. If I had a little tiny one and I wanted to normalize it, it would look like this, right? No matter what its length is, to normalize a vector is to take it and reduce it or grow it or just to, to the length of one. How do we do that? Well, if I have a p vector v, which is some p vector, I can say v dot normalize. The interesting question, though, is what happens inside that method? What is the process? There's two questions here. What is the mathematical process of normalizing a vector? And then what's the point of doing that? Like, how does that, does, how does that help anything? How does that make anything better? So let's first look at the mathematical process of normalizing the vector. OK, here is the mathematical process of normalizing the vector. <laughs> Got it. OK, let's make a vector. And it's of length 5, and it has a component of length of 4, and another component of length 3. And notice I made this a 3, 4, 5 triangle, because we can kind of do that very quickly. So how do we turn this vector into a vector of length 1? Well, how do you take any number and turn a number into 1? I mean, I could say, hey, I know 5 minus 4, that makes it 1. But that's not what we're looking for. Because if the length were 10, 10 minus 4 is 6. How do you take any number and turn it into 1? For example, and I'm going on too long with this, how do I make the number 10 turn in, or 5, or negative 3, or 0.5, or 0.05? Divide it by itself, right? Do any of these, we all get 1. So we can take a vector and divide it by its length. That gives us a vector of, 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 of length 1. And so if we divide the hypotenuse, or the length of the vector by 5, we also need to divide the components by 5. So this vector of length 1, this side is 3 fifths, and this side is 4 fifths. So that is the process. If you look again into the guts of processing, I probably should have had this open, but I, I'm just winging this stuff. And I really should prepare. But uh, if we look into the processing source code, we will see that to normalize a vector is to ask for its magnitude. And then we would say the x component of that vector is equal to itself divided by um, magnitude, and the y component is equal to itself. We normalize, we find the length, and we divide each side by its length. That gives us a vector of length 1. Let's actually go and demonstrate that in our program. It looks kind of like I prepared for this. OK, so here we are back again, um, where, where previously we asked for the vector's magnitude. Well, one thing I, um, so, so let's comment that out. And now, let's say mouse.normalize. So I'm going to normalize that vector. OK, where is it? I can't see it. It's not there. It's tiny. It's a tiny little one pixel vector. Tiny little one pixel vector. That's the thing. Normalizing the vector makes it a length 1, which is incredibly useful from a mathematical standpoint. Not so useful visually, because one pixel is not something you can really see. So <laughs> let's, let's try to make it so we can see it. Well, once I have it of length 1, why don't I just, I don't know, multiply it by 50. And now you can see, ah, its length is 50. But it's always 50. It doesn't matter how far away I go, its length is 50. The reason why normalizing a vector is so useful is once you have it length 1, it's easy to scale it to any arbitrary length. So if you just figure out what we're going to see in a moment is what if we could just figure out the direction of a vector and not worry about its length? 
when we could just normalize it to length one and scale it appropriately. So this is very, very common, and um, there's lots of things I would like to do to this example, but I think I've kind of gone on for too long. It'd be more useful to see this in a practical sense where we might normalize the vector. I should briefly mention, I think I'm back over here, that there is a function called set mag. And what set magnitude does is it normalizes and multiplies in one operation. It says, I want to set the magnitude to a certain length. So first let me normalize it to 1, and then multiply it to scale it. And that, in fact, is what we've done over here. I should just note that this could be simplified into one line of code by saying set mag 50. So these two lines of code are exactly equivalent to what that one line of code does. But I think it's important to realize what normalization is for. It's really, if you normalize a vector, it's something that only has direction. The magnitude is no longer relevant, um, and you can... Um, do all sorts of things. OK, uh, it's 3 o'clock. I have to go. I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to come back. And we're, but we're, we're actually done with this basic math stuff. And we can, we can look. Now we have these tools, add, subtract, multiply, magnitude, normalize. We can, um, we can actually start to build those into an example. And we're going to have a little mini uh, physics engine in a moment. Uh, yeah, OK. So <laughs> see ya, see ya, see ya. OK. I got to hit a button.